We're live. We're live. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> All three of us. All three of us. There he is. You and this one. I won't lie, though. I won't lie. I really want him to start humping. I've, <laughs> I've seen him humping, and it gives me joy in my heart because <laughs> the little look on his face, you just know that he's in the moment. <laughs> I'm loving it. Yeah, it. It's pure. It's pure determination. <laughs> he's not going to, is he? Look at him. He just looks like no, he's, he's, like he now. he's um. He he doesn't hump anything in this room, fortunately, because I've got it all pinned down, and I'd have him. He knows. He knows it would be just too risky because he's. You know, I could spot him in an instant. He does it when he knows I'm not able to control it. That's uh, yeah. his strategy. He knows what he's doing. We've got four people watching us. <gasps> Put a comment in, guys. Tell us who you are. Don't forget, if you've not given StreamYard consent on your Facebook, we won't be able to see who you are, so you'll have to tell us in a comment. <gasps> we had five people for a second then, and then someone's dropped off. We've already obviously already offended them. <laughs> yeah, it's because of the lack of humping, really. Someone joined them just to see dog humping. That, <laughs> yeah. We're going to get banned for saying that. <laughs> so we are in 2021 it's our first master rebel rendezvous of the year but it's our third one i think yeah. isn't it it is and we've got a couple of very key topics today so we are going to talk first of all um about tipping points in your life and that has been hello tony, yeah, um, tony. has been um instigated by uh, Lisa Avins, who um, put this actually in for our December one. We didn't get around to it, so we've promised to talk about this first uh, for this session. Hi, Selena. Um, and Can we just, uh, give a shout out as well, because Lisa's just gone live with her business, hasn't she? She has massive shout out to Lisa. So she's just started the Training Porium, which is wow. a really name. Great logo. I was looking at the site yesterday, and it's absolutely fab. So absolutely the best of luck to her. I, t I totally agree. Lisa's a client of mine and she's doing so well. She's got so much get up and go. And that girl impresses me every day. She, you know, she doesn't hang on to her, you know, sort of insecurities and things like that. She just goes and does it anyway and faces the fear. She's an amazing example for this group, actually. Um, I love, love working with her. She's absolutely perfect um, wow. as a client because she just goes and does things. She's totally open hearted and open minded. It's brilliant. So, yeah, massive good luck to Lisa. So we're going to talk about tipping points and then we're going to talk about self-acceptance, which beautifully links actually to that topic. Um, and it was something we, we we started talking about in the last um, rendezvous, isn't it? Because um, we got onto the whole sort of physical acceptance and all of that stuff. And I think it's, it's always a hot topic. So yeah. we're going to get knee deep into that as well. Yeah, which is different than knee deep. Yes. Or Needham, which Tony is here. <laughs> Charlotte's <laughs> online as well. Hello, lovely. Hi. Um, so, yeah, so we talked about tipping points just before we went live. And yeah. um, I think something that I briefly touched on in previous calls is um, years ago, I think it's eight years ago now, it'll be nine this year, um, I went I'm for, in. I know, I went for weight loss surgery. Um, and, you know, I've got some friends in the group that will remember me when I was the size of Texas um, <laughs> because I was a, a whopping 27 stone. I can't believe that. No, I know. I know. And it's like when I see pictures of myself now, it's like, fuck, <coughs> that was commitment. <laughs> you know, it's so strange because I I don't remember that person physically. I remember yeah, you do, right? Yeah, like I remember your soul and your self. Do you know what I mean? But I don't. I even when I think about you in the past, I don't think of you as like that. I think of you as as like you are now. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Because it's like I think it's always the same when you remember people in the past. You know, it's like when you remember someone that you used to play with when you were at school. Somehow you remember them as they are now, as a tiny adult. You know. <laughs> yeah. But I'd um been big all my life and um had just sort of coped with it you know it's one of those things and what you do is, is you come up with coping mechanisms and I think everyone can sort of relate to that because we've all got coping mechanisms for different 
the different aspects of our lives that we're either not confident in or we're not happy with or we're trying to avoid or something like that. Um, but for me, the coping mechanisms were around uh, how will I get around? Um, how will I cope where I'm going? So, for example, um, with the partner I was with at the time, uh, if we were going out for a meal, if we were going somewhere new, I used to ring the restaurant beforehand and ask them to describe the chairs because I didn't know if I was going to be able, to, if I was going to get stuck. Um, there were stairs and, as well. I remember stairs were a big deal, weren't they? Well, the chair, it's, coming up. it's coming down. I'm it's still coming down. Stairs. Yeah, still I, really I find stairs nervous because I'm, I worry that I'm going to fall down and cause my back. And I, I must admit, I'd much rather go upstairs. Yeah. Yeah, it's the same. yeah, I'm not very fit and it knackers me out than go downstairs. Yeah, because for me, I thought I'm not as likely to hurt myself as much if I'm going upstairs. But when you're really big, the fear of falling is like, it's a big thing. Because, yeah. you know, if you fall, you know, you're going to leave a crater, never mind hurt yourself. Um, so it's something I used to worry about. Um, and it was, it was things like that, that, you know, how am I going to get to where I'm going? Um, it wasn't necessarily how people would feel about me because I had kind of accepted myself physically, um, but it was my health. I knew because my health had started going um, downhill and I knew that the next 10 years, and that's probably all I had left, weren't going to be good. Um, and eventually went to the doctors again um, because when you're big, you know, you can go to the doctors with a broken leg and they'll tell you it's because you're fat. So it's, yeah, I, I went to the doctors and I said, I knew there was, there was things wrong and I wanted some blood tests and the doctor's sitting there and she's looking at the screen and she said, yeah, I mean, obviously because, you know, we did a test two years ago and you're diabetic and, and I'm like, what? And she went, yeah, we sent you it. And she goes quiet and she went, we didn't send you the letter. So at that point, I've been diabetic for two years wow. and hadn't had any medication or known or anything like that. I mean, obviously, I suspected. And she sort of looked at me, shit her pants. Like, I'm going to end up in court. In on the screen, literally pointed at it. And I'm like, I'll have weight loss surgery then, please. And she's like, OK, <laughs> we'll get it sorted. Um, but it's it's a big process. You know, it's not a fast process. It's no. a two-year process at that point, uh, which... But when they first tell you that, you're horrified because you want it to, you know, you want to lose it in the next 20 minutes. Um, you did a lot of research on it as well, didn't you? That, I was so grateful. Had you I was so grateful. Yeah. yeah. And most people wouldn't do that. And they also wouldn't have found out the things that you find out, found out to prepare yourself yeah. for the, the long journey ahead. Yeah, absolutely. And, and a quite shocking journey ahead as well. It was pretty traumatic, wasn't it, in lots of ways? It was. It was. You know, people must go into that and be like yeah it's just going to be a magic spell yeah and that's kind of what you think it is so mm -hmm. those about two years of doing research and getting myself ready and changing some of my mindset was perfect I'm, I'm very grateful for that because sometimes when we know that there's a change that needs to be made when we want to make it now yeah and we think the change needs to happen today and if it happens today then my problems would be sorted and you realize as you go through your life that isn't the case you know, yeah. it's not a case of tick that box and everything's fine because sometimes that brings up another issue and another issue and, and often does, you know. I don't think we ever get to a point where we're like, right, I'm now complete. I don't have any issues. I don't have anything I need to work on or anything like that. Um, okay. But yeah, it gave me the time. Yeah, I know. It gave me the time to sort of not just find out about the operation and what happens after and what you eat and all that sort of thing. But it sort of started to change very much changed my mindset to think this is possible because it's um i was thinking about this last night there were two things you know when you say when you ask the universe for something the, the universe listens um, and i realized last night that throughout my life there's two things that i've asked for and that i used to think like 20 times a day if only i could lose 10 stone i wish i could lose 10 stone I wish I could lose 10 stone and actually went on to lose quite a bit more than that. You know, I lost half my body weight. So yeah. like 12 stone in the end or more. Say that again. 
was it 12 stone or more in the end? 13, last 13 stone. Yeah. Wow. Um, and it's it's one of those things that I thought, I'd, somehow I'd asked that many times, it came to me. And, you know, people that know me will have heard me say many times that losing that weight was the easiest thing I've ever done. And it really somehow felt that way. It felt that easy. And when I look back, it felt it still feels that it was really easy. And it's only when people pointed out, yeah, but this happened and that happened. And at one point I'd lost so much weight that I had um, like a lot of weight that you carry is actually internal. So it's around your, your organs. And I'd lost so much weight so quickly. Some of them slumped a bit like a dodgy patio. Um, and I had to go in um, for another operation just to sort of, you know, put all the paving stones straight. Um, and regardless of that, you know, I was left with quite a lot of abdominal pain that I had for years. Yeah. And from that, I um, had strong painkillers. So I was on tramadol and became addicted to tramadol. Yay! Um, which oh, I managed fine. to come off. Yeah. So um, I managed to come off that cold turkey a couple of years ago when I was going through depression. I thought, I already feel like a bag of shit. Now's the best time to do it, you know. Yeah. Um, but um, And it's hard because tramadol is just so fun. Isn't it? I know a lot of people that don't like Glamadol, but I must admit, I, I've I've had some cozy yeah, time. With yeah, I'll give you a peer box from if you don't want yours. Um, <laughs> so, so yeah, it's um, not advocating drug abuse. By the way, pharmaceutical abuse would no, would no, no. It's not abuse. It's more, no, no. It's more sort of <laughs> can we enjoy them? No, um, <laughs> we're joking, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> um, so throughout that time, I mean, there were some amazing things. And I remember writing a list of non-number related goals. Because usually when you're losing weight, it's all about you get on the scales. So, you know, when I first had the operation, I was getting on the scales. So I'd wake up in the morning, weigh myself. Brilliant. I've lost like two pound in the night. Have a wee, go back to bed for an hour or so, get up and I've lost another pound. Um, the biggest weight loss in the day was I lost six pounds. Where did it go? And I still wonder about that. Where did it go? But that's that's what happened. Um, you, and, all, you also but, instantly came off the, like there was medications you were on. You uh, instantly stopped all that, didn't you, after the surgery? Yeah. Cause you didn't get any more. Yeah, there was a lot of things because was um, I was on medication for the diabetes. I also had something called idiopathic intracranial hypertension, oh, which for me God, to say, yeah. oh, that, yeah. which we nicknamed uh, fat fucker blindness because it's often related to women with a weight issue. Um, you know, and that was very, very severe medication. There you go, you've done it. We've worried about this. You just to have to do that. You've accepted it. Um, so um, all of those things, plus at that point I was on the verge of being incontinent, you know, I only had to look left quickly, you know, and I do the crackers. So um, overnight, I never took any of those medications again. Yeah. And they were coming in the night, taking my vitals and showing me, and my diabetes resolved overnight. Wow. Um, so from that, you know, um, I'm just gonna get a tissue. Hang on. Did, 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 your call is important. I'll do a little bit of entertaining. Yeah, yes, there we go. There we go. Um, I thought I had a tissue in my pocket that was gonna blow my nose on, but then I realized it's actually um, I know, but it just it just smears, it doesn't absorb. <laughs> Yeah, I thought I had a tissue in my pocket, but it's not. It's actually a dressing off my finger, and that wasn't going to work. But <laughs> um, this is real life, people. <laughs> absolutely. So, um, you know, throughout that time, I was before then, I'd actually thought about non weight related, as in numbers, things that I was looking forward to. Because the first meeting that I had, uh, with the, you know the team for the weight loss surgery, and they said, "Why do you want to lose weight?" And I said, "Because I wanted a pair of old boots." <laughs> um, and it was things like I wanted to be able to wear a pair of wellies. I wanted to be able to go up a ladder without embedding it in the ground. Things like that. I wanted to be able to cross my legs. 
And it's things like that that people don't even realise. And it's those little things. And I remember being able to tick them off one by one, being able to tick them off. And, you know, I started walking quite soon after that, which was yeah. probably the biggest change from the weight loss because I started to do, you know, I was walking about 75 miles a week in a working week. And, you know, well, I've become I mean, a real a real joy for you, hasn't it, walking? An absolute joy, an absolute joy. And throughout lockdown, it's it's not been as possible for various reasons. Um, I mean, Mark and I get out walking most days and love it. But, yeah, the amount of times I've sort of been up at five, you know, I've been leaving the house at five o'clock in the morning and walked for 18 hours. Um, it's just been an absolute joy. And it was that was something that I wasn't expecting at all that came to me and the walking brought so much to me. So it's sort of that journey, that turning point brought so much. But when you think about when I was saying, you know, you think you've got this issue once I've done that, it's sorted. That's not always the way. And it's um, since losing the weight, I've often found um, my own accepting my own body harder now than I did then. Right. Because it's like before I was just a really big woman. Now I feel a bit freaky because, you know, you wouldn't know it under this scarf like, but um, when you've had weight loss surgery, um, there's the issue of you get some really wobbly bits and which weren't wobbly before they were solid, you know what I mean? Um, so find that has been quite difficult and it's, it goes to show you that you can make a massive change to your body and still have issues, which is said to me that yeah. I've still got potentially the issue that I've got somewhere in here is still to be dealt with. And it wasn't even weight related. Don't get me wrong. I'm you know, very glad that I did um, the weight loss. Um, and I've started reading a book recently that we were talking about the other night emma that was it's really interesting because it's, it talks about um female sexuality yeah and it's one of those for, for anybody who's watched big mouth on netflix i don't think i've seen that yet oh, shit. right it's really oh, let me tell you about yeah it's a cartoon it's it's about kids going through pu puberty and it's really inappropriate but one of the things that i love about it is every now and again they'll get a bit of information the heads just blow off and when i was reading this book you know it, that's what was happening and it was very much talking about the book starts off talking about um how women have been portrayed in um throughout history and it's mostly around sort of physically if you like um and that it was even when there was sort of the first steps into medicine and modern medicine, the way, um, you know, women were viewed. And in, I'm trying to remember, I can't remember the exact details, but in, in, um, in one culture, the idea was that men's genitals were attractive, so they were on the front of their bodies. Women's were shameful, so were hidden underneath. Yeah. And then was sort of through that... Um, filter and always has been and the way really, I, I think we need to do a whole thing on this you know perhaps an after yeah. the watershed all no holds barred sort of female sexuality chit chat maybe get a couple of people involved in that yeah. i think that'd be really interesting i think that'd be really interesting because well, it's, it's something it's, it's that it's only amazing. yeah i mean i found that it's only over the last sort of six months really there's people that i've spent you being one of them obviously um there's a group of people um you know shout out to maz who's out there um and a couple of other people that i've spoken to that it's something that we don't talk about even to a set between yourselves no you know no. and like why is that and i'm not saying that men do more often i think they probably do less um but it's <clears throat> it was fascinating. There's certain boundaries, though, isn't there, that women will <laughs> talk about together? Like, you know, I mean, some of the conversations we've had, whilst I've had open conversations with other women about such matters, um, I don't think I've ever had the kinds of conversations with anyone else as I've had with you. Yeah. Um, 
you know we'll talk you might talk about a partner or and you know your experiences with a partner or whatever mm -hmm. but when it comes to you know some of the real intimate stuff about you as a person and what you know your sexuality you're into and all of those things and you know things about how you see your your female you know bits and all of that yeah. we don't really talk about that at all yeah. generally no and you know it's the interesting part about the book i mean i'm only halfway through it you know god knows what the rest of it's going to be like um when it when it talks about how we view ourselves um how we just accept that there's limitations that was me electrics flickering i don't know why it does that um you know it, it really was fascinating and it got me to a point where i realized that over the years throughout your life and this isn't just women this is men as well it's people in general you sort of fed information from the media and that sort of thing of what you should be whether that's what you look like how you should earn your money, how you should live your life, what time you should eat your tea, what you should eat for your tea, all that sort of thing is, is drip fed to us. Um, and we often, as women, we buy into that. So yeah. we think if you've got to have, your hair's got to be like this. If you've got, um, if your skin isn't perfect, there's something wrong. If your nose isn't perfect, there's something wrong. If you're short, if you're a different shape, then there's something wrong. If you're, if, you're too, if you're taller than the man you're with. Oh, shit, that must be tough, that one. And it, there's so many of them. And it's funny because when you look at somebody else, let's say someone who's taller, I, I think I don't look at them and think, wow, she's tall. How horrible that must be. Or how awful she looks. I just think... Wow, well, yeah. and then move the fuck on yeah. and it's realizing quite often when you've got these insecurities that people don't see them anymore they don't see them the way we do yeah. you don't break your own it's amplified it's massively amplified so if you've got a cold sore let's say you think everyone can see it and when you go oh this is really painful and people go i hadn't noticed it you think well aren't you just being nice but it's because we're programmed when we look in the mirror to see what's wrong yeah. One of the biggest pieces of software in our brain is facial recognition. It takes a massive amount of a brain. I know we've talked about this in the past. I've, I've banged on about this to loads of people. So I know, and it's the same for everybody. When I look in the mirror, my brain automatic knows it's me because it's me looking in the mirror. But what it actually does is it just sees changes. So all I see is flaws. And it's the same for everybody. We automatically are built that all we see are our own flaws but when we're looking at other people that isn't the case we don't see that um and you know it's like when now I'll, I'll use this in this sort of universal term when men look at women or women look at women or men whichever your sexual pre pre preference when you look at that person when you look at someone of your sexual preference let's say you don't necessarily look at them and think oh mm, yeah there's a little bit of wobbly there and yeah this is you see nice yeah you see curves and you see goodness and you see nice that so it's we we don't see what we think we see but we're yeah. so to focus in on what's wrong it completely puts the block on what's right yeah I I find this whole the gender norms part of it as well really fascinating. And actually, when you when you you've quickly mentioned hair before, um, like I sometimes think is my hair because I haven't got long hair now. Am I does it, is it too masculine for me? <clears throat> Do are men put off by so short hair? Nice. You know, silly things like that pop into my head, and then I'm like, no, I really like my hair. And that, but then also these things like you know with same sex couples and so on that. I think there's often a thing where people look at look at a couple and go, or oh, which one plays the male part and which one plays the female part in this relationship. Yeah. And it's bullshit, isn't it? It's yeah, yeah, yeah. It is absolutely. Yeah, my personal favourite for men was always who's posting on a newsletter box. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Um, but yeah, I think it's we're very much programmed to think about what's wrong. We don't necessarily yeah. look at what's what's right. And I know we often do a lot of work about, you know, gratitude. So I know, for example, Kazmos through uh, Spiritual um, as Frock um, has done a lot around gratitude, uh, which is a fantastic thing because that does 
change everything and it's when you start looking at what's right rather than what's wrong then things start to change for you and funny enough one of the things that it mentioned in the book is if you do that if you do it over and over again you look at the same thing and think i like that then that starts to become much more your norm and um one of the main things at the start of the book is about brakes and accelerators um so when it talks about for example female sexuality we often think that um women don't have the same sex drive as men I mean that's bollocks as well. There's a pun. Um, <laughs> no, I was thinking that. <laughs> the accelerators are what drives you, but the blockers are what stops you. And that's in your brain to stop basically you being like Percy. Because if we didn't have blockers, we'd go around just dry humping everybody all the time. Right. Which I think would be funny, but in COVID times would be awkward. I'm pointing at the screen. You can't even see my finger. Um, throw something at him to get him to come. Um, but <laughs> when, by the way, he's just saying, I love what, seeing women with short hair, they appear so empowered. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, when it talks about the brakes and accelerators, you realise that, that potentially women have maybe more blockers because the biggest, when they've researched, which they only started researching, I said the other day, 20 years ago, but it was in the 70s, because I think the 70s is 20 years ago. Um, they realised that the, the number one, the number one blocker for women that causes issues within their sort of sexual identity is their own, how they feel about their own bodies. Yeah. That is the block that, you know, you can be with the, the person of your dreams, you can be so happy and then you find yourself thinking oh what do i look like in this position yeah you, know, you worry about that and it instantly puts a block on that says to your body ah oh, maybe now now's not the right time yeah and that was fascinating because you know they looked at um they looked at the physical side of sexuality but then realized that the big thing that had been missed up until that point was the research into desire because that was the driver. Yeah. So when it comes to that's the big deal, isn't it? That's the, it that's the biggest, probably the biggest part of it and the bit that has been most missing when people have done that kind of research. research yeah. Time. Yeah. And I think quite often it's like when it comes to acceptance, usually the person who accepts you the most is the one that you worry about the most. I mean, it's sort of, I, I don't know, I'm just... <laughs> outside. Um, it says something to me the other time. Now banned from coming back into the rest of the house because he'd have to cross the screen. <laughs> He's got to stay in the kitchen. No, no, but you know, <laughs> um, you know, he said, "I'm going to try and get the words right." He actually said to me the other night, "I don't love you for what I think you are. I love you for what you are." Oh, God. I accept so you for what you are. Every every element of you and that's sort of a massively massively empowering thing oh that you think someone else can completely accept me why can't i accept myself so yeah. that i'm very lucky in that that i'm sort of being able to really look at those Seems elements of my life like. obviously it's not just that it's these loads of different elements of your life that you may find difficult to accept and it's you know whereas we're talking about um the physical side and predominantly from the female point of view it's the same for everything else you know whether you think um because i know um a, a friend of ours our steve higginson that we definitely need to get into the group oh, yeah. um, well, done all of, is accepted or not cool um i know he's done a lot of work about male physical acceptance um yeah. some amazing work because it's exactly the same yeah. It's just that we often get to wave the banner and say, you know, we shouldn't be treated like this. Men <coughs> don't feel that they can <coughs> oh, shout that barrier, uh, shout that barrier, banner. Um, but those elements are still going to be there. You know, am I, t am I too short? Am I too big? Am I too hairy or whatever? Stop shaving your backs, they're fine. Um, and and that's that sort of thing, you know, it's... Yeah. We have this real thing about accepting ourselves physically. Yeah. That once, and I, it's like the place that I'd love to be in is thinking, 
I am what I am. I was perfect when I was a baby because in the book, again, she talks about you get these chubby little babies and everyone's like, oh, they're perfect. And you're still perfect now, you know, regardless of what your body looks like or how you perceive your body to look, you are still perfect. You are still exactly what you're supposed to be. And I know you've been reading Paul Selig and, you know, he, he talks about that a lot, especially yeah. in Loving Coaching, which I think you're on at the moment. I am, yeah. <laughs> Paul Selleck, guys, give that a look. Paul Selleck, if you like a bit of spiritual stuff, then get on it. Yeah, absolutely. It's a big job, but it's a life changer. Oh, massively. I need to read some stuff, some comments well, on the do. input for us. So um, when we started talking about this the other day, Tony Needham said... Um, physical acceptance is a key theme for me. Thankfully, I'm body confident, but due to acne, yeah. scarring, low shape, face shape, etc., I've more than often not uh, um, felt unpretty. I always admire women who appear so comfortable in their own skin and embrace their individuality. And then later went on to say, it's um, it's easy to think we need to hide our insecurities, but of late, I've found admitting them is really yeah. liberating. Thing. I totally yeah. agree. As yeah. more often than not, others don't see me the way I do. And when yeah. they share their own insecurities, which I never saw, it proves the point that we are our own biggest critic and generally see the beauty and positive in us rather than imperfections. Yeah. So also, MK also input um, that for her physical acceptance is a hard one as it does not usually fit into the norm of issues people talk about. So maybe how to reach out. Uh, maybe to talk about how to reach out regarding self-acceptance if something is less spoken about. So I think yeah. that's quite interesting because, you know, we do fixate on some of the more common things, don't we, quite often, or we yeah. talk about some of the more common things like weight, body shape, uh, skin, some of the perhaps more visible things. Um, but it'd be interesting to know actually from MK what she feels those, those non-norm things are that people don't talk about enough yeah um but yeah there's, there's <laughs> little things isn't there that people have issues with um that nobody else would ever really consider about them oh yeah absolutely absolutely and it's and i think there are things that people are either embarrassed to talk about because they feel stupid or if it's anything to do with sort of sexuality or intimate bits people often really shy away from that. They really shy away from it. And um, it's a shame. It really is a shame. But I know I'm very much part of that. Um, but Tony's spot on that rather than all those years that I made, um, I had a mechanism on how to avoid walking downstairs. You also build yourself a mechanism on how to avoid the other parts of yourself that you want to hide. How do I hide those parts from the rest of the world? You're not hiding it from you. You're hoping that no one else will see them. So um, it, it, I think accepting that, right, okay, that is there, whatever it is. Um, the fact that I've got my thumbs, I can't do this thing. I find it, My thumbs are so small. They're virtually they're useless. They're like pig's tits. I can, that, that's as much as I can bend it. The, honestly, the shit. I don't know how I'll get through life. But it's like, so for example, if that is something that I was really self-conscious of, you know, what lengths will I go to hide it rather than thinking, show people and go, look at the size of that thumb. Um, so it's also been accepting certain aspects of me and my personality and thinking, right, I'm going to say it out loud. And I've sort of talked about some of those things and in doing so i've had massive realizations as to why i am so you know why i have issues with certain things and i remember thinking and saying it's really difficult to get past the conditioning that if you don't look like this you're not right or you're not normal um, and then realized that I've gone into agreement with that. I've agreed to be affected by that. And I actually said, but it's, it's, I've had a lifetime's worth conditioning. It's not going to go overnight, which, and I'm still, and I'm, so therefore I'm still in agreement with it. I'm saying this is still going to be an issue because it's going to take a long time to go. 
Yeah. And then maybe that is the case, but maybe it's also, okay, if I've decided that I will listen to that, maybe I can decide that I won't listen to that. Yeah. And then well, that's it's a bit of action. Decision, isn't it? It's, it can actually just be, but you have to keep feeding that decision. That's the other thing. Someone's saying afternoon, but I can't see who you are, mate. Um, so one of the things that, that I would highly recommend to help you kind of make that decision and to keep feeding that that decision is um, a documentary called Embrace. Um, oh, and that. that's by, yeah, it's by a lady called Taryn Brumfit. I think she's Australian, I think. Okay. Um, and it's, I've, I'm going to read the summary to you now. So Embrace follows body image activist Ta Taryn Brumfit. Uh, Brumfit's crusade as she explores the global issue of body loathing, inspiring us to change the way we feel about ourselves and think about our bodies. When um, she posted an unconventional before and after photo in 2013, it was seen by more than 100 million people worldwide and sparked an international media frenzy. So what she actually posted was that, so the, the bef typical before and after is obviously before I lost the weight or worked out or whatever. Yeah. Hers was the other way around. So it was actually a picture of her having put weight on and realising that she was much, much happier like that and that her, her husband absolutely supported her. Now, she got absolutely trolled for this. Yeah, I bet she did. She had, she had so many you know, people saying, you're not a good role model, etc. but also, I feel sorry for your husband, that kind of stuff. And her husband was like, actually, my wife is incredibly beautiful and I love her so much. Hi, MK. We were just talking about your love. I don't know if you heard it, but uh, it'll be on the replay. All in good terms. Um, yeah, so really fascinating it was. Um, so I definitely, definitely recommend that. Um, I'm still, you know, I'm still always on a on a, a sort of battle, I guess. There are There have been times where I've really loved my body and loved my physical self. And I think... Yeah um you know i i'm heavier than i've ever been um i struggle with that a little bit because um <laughs> i'm gay saying oh no what have i done <laughs> you've done now but good stuff um oh darren bird's on yay oh, hey, well, darren bird. oh long time no see yeah. lovely um so um what was i saying yeah so I, you know, I've sort of struggled with my weight a bit just because of age or, and the fact that I'm, you know, I'm limited with the exercise I can do for various reasons. But, um, you know, there are things about myself that I really love and I'm grateful for, but I don't feel anywhere near as body confident as I have done in the past. Yeah. Um, and it's a, a really strange thing because in in some ways or in most ways i'm much happier with myself than i've ever been i like who i am yeah um i um you know and I, I have a lot of things going on in my life that i'm incredibly happy with and i'm happy with who i am on my yeah. own without anyone having to validate that yeah but physically not so much um yeah. i'm not concerned about aging weirdly um i don't have a worry about you know, sort of how I'll, I'm, I'm quite happy to grow old gracefully. I'm quite happy yeah. for my gray hairs to come in. I'm kind of okay, you know, with a few sort of wrinkly bits starting to appear and so on. Not overly concerned about that stuff, um, but it is perhaps some of the more traditional things like weight. Mm -hmm. and I used to yeah. have a stomach and I haven't now and, you know, wobbly arms that I didn't used to have and, you know, that just kind of typical stuff really. Um and no matter, you know, there are times I think it's okay, I can deal with this, it's all right, just embrace it and I'll be all right for a bit. Yeah. And then I won't be again. And I think it's it's something, um, especially since I've lost the weight, I mean, at the moment, the fact that I very much embrace the grey, I, I like the grey hair um, and uh, I'm quite happy to sort of grow old as gracefully as I can. Um, because I mean, I'm I'm fifty this year, fifty. Yeah. Um. So you know, I'm not the same. But in a lot of ways, I am healthier than I was ten years for sure. I'm healthier probably than I was when I was twenty. You're actually um, a lot more active. Probably decreased. 
Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I don't feel that age at all. Um, and there's also the issue of when women, when men grow older, they sort of become distinguished. When me women grow older, they become invisible, you know. Um, I'm not down with that. I've never been invisible. I'm never going to be invisible. Um, and I think it's... That's one thing you will never, ever be. No, well, I thought. So, <laughs> you know, I think it's people have often looked at me and see me as being a confident person and I am a confident person. Um, but it doesn't take away the fact that you have those demons in the back of your mind going, cover that up. Don't let them see that. Don't think that. Don't be that. Um, that I'm sort of, I think the biggest step for me is realizing that I can choose not to go into agreement with those things because I already have in a lot of ways I've chosen uh, not to go in agreement with the fact that you can't have hair this short or that you know I don't often wear makeup or that you know I might look a bit different or say something different whatever so why not with all of it and I think it is a practice you know it is a practice I don't yeah. think there's anyone I mean it's like <clears throat> a friend of mine who is you know she's in her 20s she's absolutely stunning when we talk she has a lot of the same thoughts that i do because i'm thinking well why why would you have those thoughts and then you realize it's not actually about your body at all it's not your body that creates those ideas yeah. It's, yeah. It, it's going into agreement with the sort of constant conditioning yeah, well, yeah. You, you know, That's you saw John Stone thing on, on Netflix. You think how much we all consume Netflix, just as one example. You switch on anything in Netflix that's, like, fictional. It's all full of people who... It's a land of the beautiful people. Yeah. These things, yeah. these agreements we've made. Um, I'm, someone's saying this is why I don't try and fit with gender norms. I'm assuming that's MK only because I can't imagine Daz saying that. Um and <laughs> uh, we we talked a little bit earlier actually about gender norms, so definitely watch that on the replay. I think it's a really fascinating topic. I actually think we could do a really good panel show on that. Yeah, I find gender norms really fascinating because it's just so nonsensey. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring us back a little bit to the the original um thing from Lisa because I feel like we haven't done the turning point yeah. this yet. Um, yeah, it was MK. Um, so, um, so this Lisa's original question was: Would love to hear your thoughts on tipping points in your life, and at what stage have you sat back and changed your path just because you know it's right? What does that actually feel like, and what were the signs? And I think I, when I've thought about this, I've had two probably key moments. One of which is the, the probably the the most recent one or the most dramatic one, which was realizing that I had to. Um, go out on my own and get out of corporate life um that I was being toxified by it and I just got this you know I got a kick because I got made redundant um a lot of you know about that but perhaps one of the things I haven't talked about as much but although I do talk about it quite openly um <clears throat> is where you first sort of knew me many many years ago um and I was definitely what I would call a mood hoover but I didn't think I was um and I really struggled for a long time with um, under, not understanding that other people's values were different to mine and they're being very, I was very regularly disappointed and hurt by people. <clears throat> and I would wallow in it. I was very negative and you gave me a lot of good talking to's as well as other people. Um, but very significantly. I think that was her age as well, love. We were young and we used was, to... I, think you know, I mean, I'm sure when I think what it was like then. <laughs> but it was, you know, for me, it was like... So when, when you talk about, like, a tipping point, for me, that was quite a gradual process, actually. Yeah. Um, there were a number of incremental things that changed how I was and helped me come to the understanding that it was actually me that needed to change me yeah. actually not everybody else but there was a significant point at which i realized i need to get a, a grip of this now um because yeah. i was i was descending into depression i ended up off work for a month and yeah. very early on in that um our family friend matt died, uh, of matt's brother who was on yeah. the doing the beast thing um his his brother died um very young and that was devastating 
um, for many of us, obviously. And that I remember that being quite a significant point. I remember sitting and thinking, I don't want to dishonour Chris's memory by sitting in this pit of darkness because it's disrespectful and I've got so much in my life and I know I need to change. Um, so that that was a definitely a you know a, a, a signalled moment to me where yeah. I knew I had to change. <clears throat> um, but actually, some of the big changes they do take time, don't they? And they are they take time, and they come round yeah. again and again. You know, and, and it's very rare actually that you get a, a moment that is a tipping point. I I talk quite a lot now about, and we you and I have talked about this quite often a trigger for change is that is a feather a brick or a bus yeah and a feather you don't tend to notice a brick can be pretty painful if you knocks on the side of the head with it but hopefully you never get a bus which is the thing that's going to absolutely dramatically change your life but incredibly traumatically if you can change incrementally that's always going to be the preferable way to do it than having to go through a trauma that causes you to change yeah. Yeah, it's funny because when we talked about that, I viewed the bus very differently, didn't I, if you remember? Yeah. That I thought a bus is a positive thing. A bus is something where lots of people are going in the same way, so I saw it more of a support thing. But yeah. I completely agree that, that I mean, the same lessons potentially will come up over and over again throughout your life until you actually learn it. Um, and that could be in so many different ways. And, you know, there's many times over the last few years <laughs> that I felt, yeah, that's it. I accept myself as who I am now, that sort of thing. Um, and then something else will come up and something else will come up. So for me, you know, last year, it's nice saying it's last year, although the numbers don't make any difference. Um, you know, a lot of that happened for me. And it wasn't necessarily, it certainly wasn't because of, you know, it wasn't necessarily because of the Rona. It was, well, I suppose it wasn't a, a roundabout way, but... <clears throat> being able to um being put in some extreme circumstances and seeing myself and having to make some you know some big changes for various reasons is the, the thing that is also put in front of me <clears throat> oh actually no you haven't learned that lesson so getting to a certain point and thinking there you go that was it that was definitely it yeah and then like and someone goes, yeah. and something someone, elsewhere goes, are you sure now? Let's yeah, check absolutely. it. And, you know, you've heard me say many times that this doesn't happen to you, it happens for you. Yeah. And I know that it's sort of self-acceptance is something that you can't do in one go because there's yeah. so many different aspects. It's not just something where you turn <laughs> the light on and think, I now completely accept every aspect of myself. You can say that and you can aim towards that, but it's it's a practice, not a theory. So you have to work on little bits, try it, live with that, try it, live with that. So, but the biggest step is definitely accepting that you can change the way you feel about it. And then it opens up possibilities of how you can do that. Sometimes it's that question of what if, what if I felt differently about this? What if I yeah, saw what if I it? didn't worry about that? What would yeah. it be like? And that's easier somehow than I need yeah. to change my mind. Yeah. Someone, it might be MK before she changed her settings, said, youth is wasted on the young. If only this message about mind bombing, great term, uh, our own self-esteem could filter down to the younger generation. Love this chat, ladies. Then MK is also saying mini goals always help with this. I think the incremental yeah. changes. And could it be that the lesson isn't to be learned but that at the time the end goal was something different and it guided you towards that. Yeah, I agree with that as well because, you know, there's times I thought uh, <laughs> during lockdown, because, you know, I sort of split up with partner at the time, I thought if I sort of remove that person from my life, everything would be golden. I mean, I had this list of, oh, my God, you know, I saw myself as this, I, I thought it was going to be living in a Galaxy advert, obviously Galaxy Chocolate, not Galaxy, the thing around us. Um, that was like, <laughs> once I've got the house to myself, I'm going to be able to do this, and I'll be so relaxed, and I'll be that. I'll and I'll, pull out when I like. Oh, I'll do anything like, I want. Like, yeah. But within 48 hours, I was actually so stressed. I couldn't. So much just happened on the BBC. Um, oh, God, no, it's what it is. 
I couldn't even um, sleep in the, my own bedroom because I thought the roof was literally going to fall in. So, you know, when I thought this, do you remember that? Yeah, I do. That was, oh, you had some real dark times. Yeah. 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 So it was a case of thinking, if you remove this person from the equation, I will then be happy. But it was actually realising then, no, it's now I've got to see me and I've got to work on those things. And it's only then that things came up and those, um, because I wasn't focusing in the wrong direction, I was actually focusing in the right direction. And that's why it all felt like it went tits up because there were so many things that I needed to sort of look at. Um, and you know, it's been a massive benefit and it's been a massive privilege to be able to do it. It's that happy, I'll be happy when thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, isn't it? You know, when I've got that, I've got Exactly. You know, there's um, MK saying nothing major, just Scotland going into a tough lot. Oh, thank you. I just looked at that. Yeah, no, thanks. Um, the um, same old, same old. Um, mm. Yeah, so, um, yeah, that we all exactly be happy in the moment, MK. So it's, we all think, um, you know, we're, we're heading somewhere. It's like a constant hamster wheel. And I think it's great to have goals, but you also, the problem with having goals that are very ambitious is that you're never happy because when you achieve it, then what else? And it's it's great if you are the kind of person that can set goals. And I do do that now. You know, I can set goals and think, great, I've, I'm really happy that I can celebrate that. What I want to do next is, but that makes me happy because it's aligned to my purpose and it's aligned to why I'm here. But I also have to very much be happy in the now because otherwise you're just chasing a ghost. And, yeah, sure. and I think that's something that we don't teach kids in schools. Also one of the prob probably the key things that's going to help people generally be healthier in this society is to help people understand how to be happy now, how yeah. to understand and um not only what you've got and the abundance around you and, and, to, and gratitude but also understand how to have self-fueled goals so yeah, goals probably. are not dependent on you achieving a certain amount of money or a certain status or a certain career path or a certain car or house or, da, 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 or yeah. relationship even things that you know you can do that even if you were living on the streets and you had nothing that you could create some kind of self-fueled goal. Now, that is a master skill that is extremely difficult for people of the current kind of yeah. world that we're in to understand. Yeah, because I think often, um, and you see it all the time, sort of when people just have a series of goals and focus on those goals, it's uh, you have or you haven't. You've either achieved that goal or you've failed. And I've seen so many people achieve some amazing things and consider themselves to be a failure. Um, I mean, I mentioned before when, you know, when I was walking about 75 miles a week, I, I did, I managed to keep that up for a couple of weeks. And then one week I'd only done 70 miles and considered myself to be a failure. So it's, it is definitely about the journey and thinking, I want to be closer to this. For me, that's, you know, that's the way I like to think. I want yeah. to get closer to something. Um, and it's about what you've changed and what you've achieved on the way, because so often, I've headed in one direction and pivoted and gone in a different one. Um, and that way I've found something that I didn't know was there before. So I've never stopped starting. I don't have a huge attachment to finishing everything that I start. Yeah. I have more of an attachment to getting as much out of, as I can out of each of those. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> getting as much as I can out of each sort of start, if you like. So <clears throat> I love finding a new thing that I'm interested in, whether it's a food or a program or anything like that, and enjoying that in the moment. And yeah. if in two weeks' time I think, that's great, I'm bored of that, now I move on to something else, I'm good yeah. with that. You know, I, I don't that have an attack. feel better about the fact that yeah well that that that's amazing and that makes me feel a lot better about the fact i've got about 12 books on the go at any one time that you know i'm yeah. still not finishing um mk is um putting some really good stuff in here she's our star of the moment can't wait to speak to you later by the way mk um the um it's she's put something about it's recognized it's okay to be not to not be happy as well 
Um, and also, um, as, I think as regards sort of, you know, being kind of without roof situation, um, she said that um, her goal was to keep going to college regardless if I had no home to go to after. Bloody hell, mate. What yeah. you, sounds like you've had a lot of stuff to deal with in your short life so far. Yeah, definitely. She has. And she's come a long way and she's not we've said this she's not great at taking praise because she's shit out of what she does and she'll cringe we're gonna, from that, we're gonna make her we're gonna make get better at it yeah i yeah. know it's true um <laughs> but yeah it, we we do have an attachment to you must finish this you must complete that and if you don't i'm old i'm 31 she's put I, old. she's a bad girl that is you are yet a child <laughs> I remember saying that someone saying that to me when I was in my thirties, going, "Oh, you're only a kid," and I thought, and now I think, "Yeah, you're only a kid." Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. I think it's it's about enjoying today and enjoying what you've got yeah. today and moving forward and um, and just being able to accept what you've got today. And also, because I mean, a lot of what we talked about is thinking, you know wise above it and you know and sometimes no do you know what sometimes lie on the sofa and crying yesterday's knickers and that's the way of it that you know i'm lucky enough that i found myself now um in a relationship where i'm not frightened to be have a meltdown yeah oh you know? I, I, you know, i've and i learned that a long time ago that part of my process to get over crap is that i've got to have a bit of hippo time and I've got to either be depressed in it or I've got to be angry for a bit. So, you know, I had the whole New Year's Eve debacle with the fireworks. Oh, shit in the bed, yeah. Yeah, and lovely Claire sort of commented saying, you know, don't be careful of the energy you put oh, out yeah. there. You know, sort of send them love kind of attitude. And I, I totally agree with that. But for a while, I knew that I, I didn't want to do that. I felt sulky about it. And I'm like, I don't know. I, I, I want to feel angry. I feel like I have a right to my anger for at least a, a, a few minutes. And yeah. I knew that I had to process that because otherwise what I was doing is jumping to trying to force a place of forgiveness and but actually bottling up in the process. And I, I learned that many years ago when I was going through that sort of recovery from a mood hoover stage mm. um i learned that if i you know if i you've got to be positive you know i was getting that message all the time be positive you know people were who were had a god-awful job of managing for me for example were like be positive use positive language and i was like fuck off i just yeah. <laughs> i yeah. don't realize how bad it, bad it is you know and actually yeah. what i realized was when i was trying to be positive and so on it was actually just pretending and bottling it up so i yeah. now know that i go through and albeit short process and it gets shorter and shorter as i get older of wallowing whatever in whatever that low frequency emotion is yeah. so i can explore it understand where it comes from try and recognize if it's been triggered from something old and learn the lesson from it and then i can move on yeah um, yeah definitely and that's part of acceptance as well accepting that you are going to feel shit at times and it's okay to feel that because you know it helps you to it can really highlight areas that you're not going to be able to deal with if you just keep on thinking and being positive is also about being i hate using the word authentic because it seems Unauthentic. And let's use it. I, I love the word just authentic. Delighted. Just we'll we'll use it. Um, yeah, just being true to how you feel at the time and not pretending yeah. not to be. Because I mean, I've I've, I've I've had a meltdown this morning because the cat's peed on the sofa. To be fair, it's been a string of things. That was not an isolated oh, situation. Sure. No, no, we've had some big things. You no, know, when your defences are down, you've got to be yeah. a bit forgiving um steve, steve's put you've taught me to deal with them way emotions will be up and down like a stripper's knickers it's so strange <laughs> i love that i love those i love a simile mate is that a simile i don't, I don't know yeah, i i speak a lot in similes and analogies and whatnot so i don't yeah. know I, i'll for, always forget what the difference is but hey yeah because well, you know my favorite you know my favorite simile don't you was that, gonna, is it Today's um, dragon snake's dick. I love it. It's, it's and it also, you used tall. to tell me that my hair was as slick as shiny as knocked off a knocker. That's it. it. Was, yeah, it's one of my mum's uncouth sayings. She had a whole range of them. <laughs> yeah, I was so embarrassed. Falls up my own hole. 
oh, how God, old came before the time of your mum? Yeah, any medicine was for coughs, colds, and sore owls. And if she was busy, <laughs> she didn't have time for a shit shaved wanker haircut. Oh, you know, God, is, you know there is a, a worse one, but we'll wait maybe for another. <laughs> I'll never forget the um, shopping city. Ah, that's the best. Oh, one. God. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, I mean, there you go. My mum was unapologetically herself. Oh, God. Such a role model for that, actually. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, it's, it's you know, it's all come back really to. <laughs> In case commented, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna say it the exact way she spelt it. It's always time for a W and eight K. <laughs> Good girl. <laughs> it, it was it was my mum, and she used to say it really quickly and not really think about what she was saying, which was the same yeah. crap we were saying. She didn't really take in what she was saying. She just said it because her mum had said it. Um, do, you remember, but, do you remember oh you look like you've had a good two weeks oh she, yeah she was yeah she's absolutely <laughs> yeah we met up with a friend of mine it was in the summer and he had shorts on and um johnny's mixed race and my mum literally literally touched his leg rubbed his leg and went oh you've got a lovely time where have you been <laughs> she was a bit of a sexual predator my mum on the slide she <laughs> grip hold of anyone and she had hold of him at the time as well and he was like <laughs> and when he had gone when he'd gone she was like oh he was a nice and I'm like where'd you been I'm like um well no he's black and she's like I know where's he been and I'm like no and it's <laughs> like fucking hell go after him he's gonna think I'm a racialist I think Steve put my granddad's uh, saying was he do, he don't know whether his arse is punched board or countersunk. <laughs> what? That's one of those that doesn't really mean much because she used to say I'd go on the streets if it didn't cough so much. <laughs> go what? She said I'd go if she was if she was hard up. She'd say I'd go on the streets if it didn't cough so much. <laughs> and I remember saying to her, why does that make a difference? And she. She actually said, because it probably keep falling out. <laughs> oh, I, think God. Right. I think she was right. I don't know. The fact she's actually like processed that as well is hilarious. She processed it a bit because we talked What's many, that? many times about the whole, yeah, it's shinier than snot off a knocker. <laughs> so many people. Do we mean <laughs> door knocker, like a brass knocker? Or a boob, and it could be either. <laughs> it could be either because let's be honest, it's the snot that makes it shiny, not necessarily what it's on. It's on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh God! As always, we could go on for another hour because yeah. it's just it, it, enlightening, amusing, and many other things in between. <laughs> yeah. It's Guys, if you're watching this on replay, do put us in a comment or a hashtag replay or something so we can gauge what's going on. Um, I think we might, if if you're um, able to, Rippers, I think we might try an evening time for our next one to see if we okay. get a different crowd. Yeah. What do you reckon? Yeah, oh, good out, good up. yeah. Um, thank you so much for the guys that have been on live with us so far in your comments. It's definitely made it, um, given it an extra dimension. We love it when you get involved. Um, let's hope this stuff's been helpful. I think this has been really good stuff. And uh, as we're talking, there's so many thoughts I've got around having specific conversations yeah. on the various different things. I definitely think some sort of panel show would be really interesting for us to do. Yeah. Um, we could do we could do like RuPaul's snatch race snatch game snatch <laughs> thingy maybe we shouldn't maybe we shouldn't maybe we should okay you definitely mixed up various things <laughs> I did, yeah what is it called is it it's snatch game drag race drag race featuring snatch game <laughs> correct I can't even say it myself now. Right. Any who's there, that's us. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in, everybody. Thank you, as always, my good, lovely mate, Rippers. I'm going um, to try to put me out of a cushion now. Good for you. Yeah. Until next time. Yes, indeed. <laughs> good luck with the cushion. Goodbye. Bye, Goodbye. everybody. Bye. <laughs>